Hi guys, Richard here from Dadbrow, and today we're taking a look at the Class 484 by Rivet Games for Train Sim World 2. Before we jump into the video guys, and as always, all the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own and may not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. Of course, if you like this video as well, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing, that would be absolutely brilliant. I am obliged to tell you as well that Dovetail Games have given me this route free of charge, but as I said earlier, all the opinions expressed within this video are solely my own. If I don't like something, I'll say I don't like it. If I do like something, I'll say I do like it. It's, uh, it's entirely up to me what I say and what I think of the route. Although, it's quite a good one. I think you're going to like it. Let's jump straight in. Okay, so here we go. And just to let you know as well, guys, I am recording this completely live. This is unedited. This is, this is being recorded, being uploaded exactly as it comes out. So uh, fingers crossed it's not too bad. So there we go, the Class 484 uh, XD stock on the um, island line. So we'll address the elephant in the room first of all, which of course is the livery. The livery is not correct, and I know that's caused quite a lot of controversy in the, um, in the forums and in the chats and stuff like that. Um, I believe there's been a licensing issue. They can't get the Southwestern Railway license uh, branding. Um, I don't think Southwestern Railway have said no, they just haven't said yes. But of course, this is exactly what the livery editor exists for. So uh, I'm sure before the day's up, release day's up, someone would have gone in there and completely sorted that out straight away. I'm totally used to the livery editor, so I'm not even going to entertain that. So here are we, we are in the 484 cab. Just have a little look around, see what we've got. All looks very nice. Single power handle. Power combined power brake. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, and this is one of the faults I've noticed on uh, this particular route, or this particular train. Loving the cab door buttons, by the way, guys. You've got to press the cab door button to get it open, which is really nice. Um, one of the things I've noticed running down the platform is that all the trains seem to have white lights on the back of them instead of red so if you want to be pedantic and play the game properly then do run down the back and change those to get the door open key into one of these nice slots there in we go and just change that to reds and one more tail lights on there we go and closing the doors up again I quite like the sounds on this I think the sounds are pretty good there we go, reds on the back. Okay, let's get up the front and get this set up ready for departure. So we can close our cab door by pressing the cab door close button. Lovely. We're going to have all the safety systems in, although um, the route is not fitted with AWS in real life. Uh, but we're going to put it in as a matter of course, because as you know, I like playing with safety systems turned on. And we'll get back in the seat and get the key on. So quite an easy train to set up this, pretty much the same as most UK stock. It's key on, into neutral. And you've got your lights up here as we saw in the back cab, so we'll put those on to um, day running just there. We do have working um, passenger information system and I'll show you that in a minute. You've also got here instrument lights. So when we go through the tunnel at uh, Ride St John's, you'll need to um, dial those up a little bit so you can see what's going on. We've got DRA. Uh, we've got our cab lights, cab lights, spotlight, which will work really well. Um, a lot of the other buttons in here are not functional, so um, stuff like the Demister WSP, um, not functional. Hazard warning lights, not functional. But overall, I think they've done a really good job. I think the train looks, uh, looks and drives really nice, as you'll see in a few moments' time. So we're still showing safety systems isolated and temporary isolation fault. Um, so what we need to do is come over to this panel and put that in the normal position. Now when you key off and key back on, the TPWS will automatically reset itself. So unless that's been isolated since we put the key on, um, that would be in the normal position. So normally you wouldn't need to do that. Okay, so door operation. And we need to get some passenger lights on as well, which are just over here so we have a look 
Yeah, we can see we've got no passenger lights on. Uh, saloon lighting on. And there we have it. So, let's have a quick look at the HUD and see what we're doing. We are at Shanklin. We are going to Lake Sandown, Braiding, Ride St. John's, uh, Ride Esplade, and Ride Pierhead. So we're not stopping at uh, Smallbrook Junction on this particular service. Okay, lock doors. And stop at Lake. Okay, so we're into forward. And off we go. And he's speeding already. <laughs> wouldn't be a dad row wouldn't be a dad row video without a little bit of speeding, would it? You know how it works. Right, let's get her going. I'm just going to turn the game audio down a little bit. Hopefully you can hear the train alright. So as well as the new 484 stock, you do of course get the uh, completely remodelled island line. Uh, when the 484 stock was brought in, they had to raise the heights of the platform. There was an extra passing, late, uh, passing loop put in at um, Braiding, never remember the name of the station, sorry. Yeah, there's an extra passing late put in at Braiding. Um, they had to raise the height of the platforms. So the entire route has been remodeled. And compared to the original route, I think they've made a really good job of it. I do find Rivet Games, um, the sort of, um, the artwork, the on-route artwork, I forget what they call it. Um, they are really, really good at that sort of, the environment art, that's the word I'm looking for. They are really, really good at that sort of thing. Um, if you check on my channel as well, I've done a comparison video comparing the old route and the new route. Um, you can see the difference on the stations and e even like the density of the line side foliage, the lighting and stuff like that. There's been so many improvements. Um, it looks much, much better. So recording this live, let's try not to overshoot as we come into Lake. Yes, you can see on the right there where the platform's been raised up from the original height. And we are two on the left, two on the S, <laughs> doors on the right. Yes, you can see here at Lake Station, um, you know, sort of the environment art's really, really good there. Disability access ramps. Uh, you can see there quite clearly where the platforms have been raised up. Really nice ballast textures and everything going on there. Emergency points, do they work? I suspect we'd need to be out of the cab to chest test that, wouldn't we? And of course we've got working PIS on the whole route as well. Uh, we are late, so let's get going. I, I turned the train off. Right, we're off to Sandown. Good for 45. If you're enjoying this video, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. You're also very welcome to follow me on my social media channels, which are on the screen for you right now. And if you're that way inclined, you can join me in Discord. There is a link in the description below. So we've got a whistle board there. We've got two types of whistle on this. We do the space bar. We get our standard low tone and we do the N. We've got the good old London underground tone. There's our 15. Oh, 
I'm speeding. Terrible. Sack me. <laughs> we got it down. We got it down for Sandown. So the brakes on this are really kind of, um, when you're above 10 miles an hour, you've got the regenerative, regenerative, regenerative dynamic braking type thing going on, um, which is really good. And when you drop below 10, you get the air brakes. And what you've got to remember on this is when the air brakes come on, they do take a little while to release. So um, if you've got a lot of braking and you release it, there's a good chance you're going to come to a stand before the brake actually releases. Um, so at, the, at those lower speeds, you just need to be a bit mindful of the brake, which is, which is really good. Yeah, see what I mean about the, um, the the attention to detail on the environment art? Trampoline. What we really need is weather. When you've got wind turned on, that trampoline should be on the track. <laughs> yeah, really nice flower beds and planters. And uh, ignore the guy stuck in the road there. I'm sure that's just a glitch. We, we pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, we got the peripheral paving there. Look, we got the spikes at the end of the platform signage. Yeah, really nice. Uh, it does help if we close the doors first, doesn't it? We are 15. So I don't know if you noticed there, guys, when the doors are closing, you can constantly hear the click, 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 click of the button. Um, until the doors are actually closed, I am told that that is a game engine problem. That is not a problem with the route. Um, so that's something that hopefully will be addressed in the future. So basically what's happened is what you've pressed the closed door button and the game is automatically repeating that button until the doors are actually closed. Good for 45. Right, as Joe would say, let's get a flyby shot. Joe being the British ace, go and check his channel out if you haven't already. They do accelerate really quickly. Speeding before you know it. Yeah, I must confess I'm I'm no expert on the island line at all. Um, I've only travelled in it once, and that was when it had the um, the old stock on it. I've not been over there since they've had the new stock. So I'm kind of looking at this train as a bit of an outsider rather than a, an industry professional, as it were. Um, and I, I quite like it. I think the sounds are... I don't know if they're accurate, because like I said, I don't know the train. Um, but I think the sounds are good. I think it handles really well. I think the cab's been modelled nicely. I kind of like the viewpoint you get from out the front as well. Um, sometimes I find that cabs are too zoomed in or too zoomed out so you don't, you can't see enough of the desk or you can see too much of the desk. Um, but I think they've got this one really well balanced. I think mean, no, it's just, just a nice looking cab. It's all pretty neat and tidy. There are um, there are a couple of things wrong with it and I'll, uh, I'll point those out to you a bit later on. But yeah, overall it's, it's pretty good. Um, the original Island Line as well was it was pretty buggy, if I remember rightly. Um, but so far, I've, I've played this probably a dozen times. And um, so far, I've not really encountered any bugs at all. It's been... Other than the man stuck in the pavement there. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been pretty good. I've managed to complete every service I've attempted to do. So that's, uh, that's definitely in the right direction. So of course, as part of the 
updates to the island line. Braiding only used to have one platform. It now has a passing loop. Which, of course, has been modelled. Fifteen. No speeding this time. I think uh, Rivet Games have got the price point of this. I think it's fourteen ninety nine. I think they've got the price point just about right. They are marketing it as a um, a loco add-on rather than a root add-on. Uh, but obviously you need the updated island line to run it. So I think you're basically getting an updated route, or if you don't have the original island line, because you don't need to have the original island line in order to have this one, um, you're getting a completely new route and a train for um, you know just under £15. I think that's uh, pretty good going, really. Oh, stopped. Open the doors. So like I said, we've got working destination displays. I've got to try and remember the button now. I think it's F6, F7 maybe. There we go. So Shanklin, Lake, Sandown, Braiding. Smallbrook Junction, I'm guessing that is. Uh, ride St. John's, Ride Espalade, Ride Pierhead. Not in service. Welcome aboard. And special. So where are we? We are off to... Ride pier head. I oh, will have special. <laughs> you didn't see that slight bug there. The guy standing on the end of the platform. It's just disappeared. I uh, will confess I am playing the pre-release um, version of this at the moment, so it could be that these little bugs have been ironed out in the full release version. But there's not that many of them. Like I said, I'm the game's perfectly playable, which compared to the original Island Line, um, so many times playing that and it would crash on me or you'd get stuck at red signals or something. I've not had that at all on here, which is really good. So we're off to ride St. John's, 3.2 miles to go. It's very hot tonight. <laughs> I'm, it's currently half past midnight. So it's currently, um, it's release day for this route, half past midnight on release day. And if you're watching this video in like 2025, today was the hottest day on record in the UK. And it's still very warm. And I'm sitting next to a computer tower that's down by my legs, chucking off a load of heat. And if this wasn't a family friendly channel, I'd be telling you I've got Betty Swallocks. I should probably bleep that bit out. So let's have a look at the exterior of the train. Like I say, I'm not a, I'm not an expert on these um, units by any stretch of the imagination, but to me that looks pretty good. Not too bad at all. Right, we're good for 45. Let's get her going. So you do have on here um, reduced power switch, 
which does work quite nicely. I'll show you when we pull away from the next station if I remember. Um, basically, you won't get above sort of five miles an hour with the reduced power switching. So if you're shunting in the depot, and there are a few shunting jobs at uh, Wright St John's, um, you'll see the depot as we get there in a minute. So there's a, there's a few uh, diagrams and schedules on here where you start in the depot and you have to get the train out. So putting the reduced power mode on is uh, really good in that situation. So I don't know if we can change the destination display on... No, the, the buttons are inoperative on the in-cab panel there. Which is a little bit of a shame. And we've got our windscreen wiper controls which are all fully operational. Cap heater, definitely on call today. And um, we've got our all trips and sets which seem to work there. Uh, we've got a door panel signal buzzer. It's quite a friendly noise. And working vigilance. So this is Smallbrook Junction. If we jump out you can see they've got the um, steam side modelled as well. All looks rather nice. He says having lost all the speed. And we get a nice bit of semaphore signalling going on now. We do like a bit of semaphore. Warning for a 20. And uh, we've got the semaphore distant. Now that's wrong. Um, the semaphore distant seems to be glowing green. Uh, semaphore distant in the horizontal position like that should be glowing yellow, not green. Um, so that is wrong. Basically, a semaphore signal in the horizontal, semaphore distance signal in the horizontal position um, tells us as a driver that we've got to expect all signals within this signal box area to be at danger. So yeah, not, not just the next signal, all signals within this signal box area, we've got to expect them to be at danger. As we approach, ride St John's Road, and you'll see the depot um, over to the right here which is lovely and full with other units. It's those brakes catching me out at the end there, not releasing very quickly. Unlock left. So let's go and have a quick look at the uh, interior of the train as well. We have a complete and utter lack of passengers. See, I think, like I said, I'm no expert on these. The lighting seems possibly a little bit too bright. Um... Okay, that's interesting. I haven't unlocked the doors on that side, but it's still letting me open them. Pascom? Is the, is the Pascom functional? No. We do have uh, interconnecting doors as well. Which are quite nicely done there. And of course, working PIS inside the train as well. as we get back in the chair. Um, we'll just run over and have a quick look at the uh, depot, if I can find the right buttons. So there you go, yeah, right St John's, that is the depot. Um, now what I want to know is if all these units have got separate numbers, because that would be pretty cool. 
So, 484, 005, 003, 001. Ah, oh, that is awesome. So, we've got 1, 3, and 5. What one are we working? We're working 4. So, where's number 2? So, I'm hoping that at some point we're going to pass number 2. Is there a number 2? I'm guessing there's a number 2. I'm not sure if this is me pressing the wrong button, but I keep turning the train off for some um, very strange reason. Okay, so we are 20. drop down into the tunnel. So I'd be interested to know in the comments section below, guys, what your thoughts are on the new um, the new train slash route. Do you prefer this one to the original island line? Uh, in the simulator and in real life? Do you plan on getting it? What are your thoughts on it? Really, really interested to hear. Like I said, me personally, there's a there's a couple of little bugs in it. There's a couple of things on the um, train that are not right. Um, there's something with the TPWS which isn't quite right. But I, I think overall, it's it's a good driving experience. Um, you've, you've kind of got. I mean, we'd all like everything to be. And I'm I'm sound like I'm going to fanboy Rivet Games here and dovetail. Um, but I do gen genuinely feel you know you've got to. You've got to be realistic about your expectations. At the end of the day, they're trying to make a product that's commercially viable. And I would love to see working GSMR, working TPWS. I'd love to see all the safety systems implemented and everything else. But as well as appeal, appeal, appealing to us hardcore rail enthusiasts, you know, and, and people that want things bang on, they're also sort of appealing to an arcade kind of computer games market as well. Um, and they've kind of got to strike that balance. So, yeah, I think over time, you know, Things have got a lot, lot better with Train Team World. There's a lot more simulated and stuff. Um, there's still a couple of, bit, couple of little bits that I would like to see. But yeah, no, overall, I'm, I'm really pleased with this. I love the lighting in the tunnel as well. That's really good. I've, I've noted a few people have said, oh, it's, it's a bit dark. But it really isn't. That's kind of what you'd expect to see in a tunnel. As we come up to Ride Espalade. Espalade. Is it Espalade? I, I can never pronounce that word. Come on, release. <laughs> and we are all stopped. Two on the S. So one of the things that's worth noting here... We now have hovercrafts. Now, I'm go I'm going to put this out there. I think these hovercrafts look like Roblox models. <laughs> they're there, which is the main thing. You know, they're there. We know what they're supposed to be. Um, they don't look too bad. They don't look too bad at all. I'd I'd rather they were there than not there. Really nice texture on the ground on the sand there as well. I've never noticed that before. And you'll notice as well as we go across the pier now that the uh, water textures have been somewhat outdated. So I was going to show you the um, reduced power mode. So I'm going to put that on. Uh, show you what that does. So I've taken full power. And we don't get very much of it, as you can see. Yes, pretty ideal for shunting and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, that is about all it is good for. Let's get it back into... And off we go. 15 miles an hour. 15... 
20 at the moment, it will be 15. We have a fixed distance signal to our left. 15 as we come across the pier. So yeah, the, um, the water physics have been updated, and I must say, it generally looks a lot, a lot better than it did. Yes, yeah, so I think, to me personally, credit where credit's due. Um, I think they've done a pretty good job on this. I was going to hope, hope, trying to circle the train there, but I think the lamppost got in the way. No, it doesn't like it. Yep, lamppost is in the way. Never mind. So I'm going to show you one of the things that's um, wrong with the train now. This will prevent me from completing the scenario. So TPDRS approaching the buffer stop is not modelled. Um, as it isn't on most trains in world routes. However, just beyond the stopping point there, we've got a TPWS grid. You can see there. Now, I'm going to purposely run over this grid. This is going to stop me completing the scenario, I believe. Um, but I'll show you why I'm going to run over it. Right, so my TPWS is activated. Uh, it's going to let me open the door. That's good. Now, if you can see there, there you've got the brake release light is flashing. This is a TPWS Mark IV panel. That is not a light. That light does not flash in real life. That is that is not a light. It's just a button. Um, in reality, you'd have the SPAD, the overspeed, or the AWS light would be flashing. That does not flash. Um, but I feel that's, that's quite pedantic of me to pick up on that, I think. But there we go. We should also be setting our DRA because we are on a red signal as well. Buffer stop is classed as a red signal. Uh, what does it want me to do? It wants me to lock the doors and I think we'll, we'll get our score. Well, we won't do that just yet then. We're going to have a little nosy around first before we do that. The other thing I've noticed as well, guys, is if you get out the cab door and you're stopped next to these railings, um, it'll let you get out the cab door, but then you kind of get stuck. And if you close the door behind you, you can't open it again, um, which is not so good. So there we go. Yeah, be really interested to hear down in the comment section, guys, what you think of this train. Um, other than the livery, I know, but there's going to be people with the livery editor that are going to sort that out pretty quickly, I would imagine. Um, let's close the doors up and see what I get score-wise. See how generous it's feeling today. Uh, where's the doors closed? There we go. Is it going to let me do that side? There we go. It's closing. What's it going to give me? Lots of speeding. Look at that. That is terrible. <laughs> I deserve that, to be fair. Considering I've driven that probably about a dozen times, that is pretty poor. Lots of speeding. Bad. Bro What's all this about over here? What's going on there on the download? Absolutely no idea what I was doing there. But there we go. Never mind. Never mind. If you have enjoyed this video, guys, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to Dadbrow. That would be brilliant. If you want to see the differences between the new Iden line and the old Iden line, I have put a video out um, on my channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, it's just a five, six minute video comparing the two different routes. Which is quite good, but I would say that because I'm maybe ever so slightly biased. Uh, if you want to join in the conversation, guys, you can do over on Discord. There is a link in the description below to that. And it would be absolutely awesome to see you on my social media channels, which are on the screen for you right now. I'd like to say a massive thank you to all my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen scrolling across now, or they will be very shortly. If you want to find out more about Patreon, you can do over on patreon.com forward slash dadrail. That is it for me. Completed the video. This is unedited. This is this is recorded and it's going straight out as it is, which is good. So until next time guys, like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next video. Something had to go wrong. I pressed the button. Come on, end. I pressed the end button. Please work. Hey.